Let's talk recipe planning and quoting a design from a reference picture. Hello flower fam, welcome back to this week's YouTube video and today because a couple of you guys have reached out and said, hey, could you talk me through how I create a recipe, what the heck a floral design recipe is and how I can even create one from a reference photo so I can provide an accurate quote to my client? Yes, of course I can. It's one of my most favorite things to talk about and it's one of the things that I didn't even know <laughs> was a thing till about four years into my flower business. I'm super curious and so let me know in the comments below, is like a flower recipe something that you've heard of before or are you anything like me? <laughs> like we're all just in our business and I was like, oh, topic 9,456 that you don't learn at formal floristry training. Like I literally didn't know that a flower recipe was a thing. <laughs> So like one of the girls who was coming and freelancing for me, she's like, hey, where are your recipes? And I was like, my what? What are you even talking about? Did not even know. Like did not even know that you could actually plan ahead of time and have like stem counts and all the things. So I wanted to make sure that everybody here knows what a floral recipe is and how to create one from a reference picture because I love me a good recipe. And I will tell you like I'm a designer that loves structure, right? I love the freedom that actually comes from putting a lot of constraints on my design process. And for me, I think recipes helped me really balance creativity and commercialism. Because I spent the first few years of my business just really not loving the designs that I was making for my clients and really not confident in my pricing. And I know that once I started to learn the concept of a recipe, once I started to understand the point of creating recipes, how it can help you plan for your wholesalers, how it can help you make sure you're on budget, and how it can help you actually provide a quote for a customer. I was like, okay, I'm in. Now I'm like the recipe planning queen and I absolutely love it. Because for me, it just gives me that reassurance, that understanding that I know, okay, I've got enough product, I've planned things out, I know that they're gonna fit into my formula in terms of design and I know that I'm ordering enough, right? But I also know I'm gonna be making money at the end of the day. So let's jump into all things floral design, recipes and quoting and all of the ins and outs in terms of how to make it work. First things first, I just wanna make sure we're all on the same playing field here, that we all understand the concept of a flower recipe. I don't know the history of the English language, but I'm assuming whoever decided that floral designers should be working with recipes was inspired by cookbooks and was inspired by the whole world of chefs, right? And there's so much that we as floral designers can borrow from the food industry. There's actually an incredible number of similarities and recipes in the floral design world are exactly like recipes in the food and restaurant world. They might look a little bit different because the ingredients are a little bit different, but what it basically is, is a summary of the ingredients to use the stem counts, and then the mechanics or the design guidelines in terms of making it happen. So the principle is exactly what you might think in terms of like your grandma's recipe for cookies or your dad's recipe for apple pie. And my dad's recipe for apple pie is like quite astounding. <laughs> it's so good, but let's not get distracted. A floral design recipe is exactly as it sounds, right? You write down the ingredients and then you write down the stems and then you write down your notes in terms of the actual design and the format, right? And where it really starts to help you as a business owner is you can take that recipe, you can brief a designer and you know with a little bit of guidance and a few tweaks here and there that without much of hand holding by you, what's gonna come out the other end is gonna be profitable, it's gonna to be to your expectation, and it's going to help you free up your capacity so that you're not doing all the design work all the time. So let's talk about my four step approach to making it work. First things first, find a picture. Now you could be scrolling through Instagram, you can jump onto Pinterest, you can find something on Google, you can look in a magazine. If there's a picture of anything that you wanna create a recipe with, you can do that. I love creating a little compilation, like going in on Instagram and like saving other people's posts, and I still do this work to this day. I 
love deconstructing other designers work and really understanding what do I like about it? What can I learn from it? And how can I apply that into my own work? So if you jump on Pinterest and you can, let's say we're going to go with an elevated table arrangement. You can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling until you find something that kind of captures your attention. And I love using this as a bit of an intentional practice because it gets you really comfortable in terms of being able to quote designs really quickly, but it also, you can kind of challenge yourself in terms of like looking at a picture, guessing the price, and then actually going through this process to see how far off you are, which is what usually happens for most of us. And I'm gonna use this picture of an elevated table arrangement that has quite an abundance of foliage, but also an abundance of flowers. I used to completely underestimate the size of some of these elevated arrangements, but if we kind of look at it from tip to tip, from foliage to foliage end, assuming that's Ruscus, right? It's probably almost two, three feet in diameter. Like this is quite a significant table arrangement. So I'm just going to tell you right now, it's going to be more expensive than you originally think it is, because when I did this math, it's more expensive than I thought it was. <laughs> Looking at the scale of it on this table and really then starting to deconstruct and dissect, step number one is really thinking about what mechanics do you want to use? Once you've decided the mechanics, and in this case, I'm gonna suggest that I might do this with a plastic oasis bowl, some chicken wire, and some tape. You might do it with floral foam or something completely different. <laughs> I don't know what that would be, but adjust the pricing accordingly based on the mechanics that you want to use. After you've decided what kind of mechanics you want to use, then go in and actually identify the ingredients, right? You can obviously see that there's coral charm peonies and some spray roses and lisianthus and definitely like some Juliet roses and I think shimmer roses, but just go in there and look at the ingredients and adjust the ingredients based on what is in season around you, the color palette that you're gonna be using and what kind of foliages you have access to. Because here in Australia, we have access to very different foliages than you guys in America in particular. So just make sure you take on board the specific ingredients that you have around you, as well as the specific ingredients that you like to use. This is where you're allowed to take this recipe and make it your own. So by the time I actually go through this entire process, process. I've just changed the coral charm peonies to carnations because I know for us in Australia, coral charm peonies are really only available within a two week window. And I'm just going to assume for the purposes of this exercise that they're not available. So go in and adjust the actual ingredients to your own taste, to the color palette and to what's around you in season. And then step number three is to count the stems. And I know that this sounds a little bit crazy, but I absolutely literally will look at the picture and I'll be like, one, two, three, four. And then I'll take that number and I'll assume there's the same number on the opposite side of this particular design. Like I'm a little kid. That's how I actually go through and do this whole exercise. <laughs> Everybody thinks it's like super fancy and it's something like crazy out there. No, I count them. <laughs> so go out there and just literally count them one at a time and just work your way through one ingredient, one stem, one like flower, one foliage at a time and just work through the process because I know we want to just like jump to the part where you give your client a quote, but this is so incredibly helpful and it really makes you make sure that you are actually paying attention to everything that's in that design. If you're doing a design that has two sides to it, make sure that you're counting for both a front and a back, or if it has three sides to it, that you're counting for a front and a back and a side, however you want to do that. And step number four, do the math. I promise you every single time I do this, every time I provide a quote based off of a reference picture, every time I sit down and go, okay, if I was gonna do that design, here's how much I need to charge the client. The number is always higher than my original estimate, particularly with the forever increasing costs of wholesale flowers. It's really important to go through this process and just allow the equation to be the equation because at the end of the day, the math is incredibly simple, right? Like our seven year old nephews, can do this math. But for so many of us, myself included, right, we add so much judgment, so much I can't charge that much, so much there's nobody will pay that much, right? So many stories that we add on top of the price that are just getting in the way of us building a profitable business. So just allow the math to be simple, allow the equation to be as is, and don't be putting all of your scarcity, I'm not good enough thoughts 
in there because it's not in the equation. I will also actually link this exact spreadsheet down in the description below so that you have access to it. If you want to use this spreadsheet, you will need to go in and make a copy of it, but I'll give you the instructions on how to do that at the top of the spreadsheet. But so that you have this exact approach, you have my exact recipe for this reference picture, but go out there and try it for yourself. And I think it's such an incredible exercise for us to make the time to do this, right? There's so much emphasis put on like flower care and design mechanics and it is important but it's also really important that we build the skill set of creating recipes and that we build the skill set of being able to provide quotes and accurate quotes to our clients based on a reference picture of something that we would like to be creating the other thing I will also link below is my exact approach to pricing and it's super simple it doesn't need to be complicated, my friends, but there's some great blog posts on our website to make it even easier for you to get super comfortable, super confident with your pricing. And when your brain freaks out because you're like, I can't charge that much, just tell your brain that you're doing it right because you are. <laughs> the equation works and we're allowed to allow the pricing to be simple. Okay, my friend, go out there, grab this Google Sheet, right? If you're way too intimidated by spreadsheets, that's fine. You can totally do it with pen and paper on a piece of good old paper, do it analog style, but go out there and find a reference picture of something that you like, or go out there and do your version of this elevated arrangement or a beautiful archway or a bridal bouquet, or even like a small delicate table arrangement. Go out there and practice this, right? And allow it to be super simple and super straightforward and get really familiar with the kinds of ingredients that you wanna use in your own designs and what's in season around you. And just know that you can use anybody's picture as inspiration because literally it is impossible <laughs> for us to directly replicate anybody's design because we never have access to the same ingredients. Nothing is ever that predictable that comes from mother nature and we always all have our own design preferences in terms of ingredients. So go out there and just find some inspiration around you and then sit down and go through this process. It is allowed to be simple and it is allowed to be straightforward. And you can also just jump on Instagram and make sure you are compiling a little library, like hit the save button, a little library of your favorite designers, and then go out there and actually go through this process, identify the ingredients, count the stems, and then do the math. And just get to the point where you can feel really confident in the quote that you're giving to your client, but also then know you can use this exact same approach in terms of creating recipes for yourself for every single design that you wanna create under the sun. Floral design recipes change the game. They bring so much more structure into what can feel very chaotic when we're trying to order from the wholesalers and trying to make sure we're pricing for profit and trying to make sure that we're getting quotes to clients that are super duper accurate. So. Floral design recipes are your BFF. As always, my friends, I hope that this has been helpful. If you have any preferences, ideas, recommendations, suggestions, or I would love to seize, please leave it in the comments below because I wanna make sure that you feel like you have all the tools that you need to build a thriving flower business. And if you haven't yet signed up for my free course, make sure you do that. My free one hour training business masterclass specifically for flower business owners. All you have to do is visit fourflorescom backslash free course enter your name and email address and you'll get immediate access to that free training. So always my people go out there, have the most amazing day, create some magic, make some money, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.